Hi, I'm Morton Gans Pedersen, and you're watching Rovers Chat. Hello, and welcome back to the Rovers Chat YouTube channel. We're sitting down after Rovers' 4 1 defeat to Nottingham Forest to hand out the play ratings. Now, given Rovers have been defeated and beat quite heavily, you can guess who's joining me. It's Dom. How are we doing, Dom? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Thank you very much. Um, obviously, I'm a curse at the minute, so I'll uh, try and refrain myself from being on this channel uh, at the minute. So. Uh, but I'm doing well. I'm doing good. Uh, it was only twelve pound a ticket, so I, I do uh, appreciate that at least. Uh, we're getting up to Christmas as well, so uh, Merry Christmas, everybody! Because obviously this might be the last time we speak before Christmas Day. Um, yeah, how, yeah, how, are you, how are you doing, Dan? Yeah, good, good. Uh, looking forward to Christmas. The football. I love that week after Christmas. Yeah. The one up leading up to New Year, then three games. My favorite time of the year, but. Let's get into the play ratings. Obviously, a tough one to rate before we start. I think we'll start with a caveat of when you play in a Premier League side that come with a full strength side, essentially, it's so hard to kind of pick out ratings for each players. We've tried the best. Leave your ratings below. I'm sure there'll be some just talking off here with Dom. I'm sure there'll be some that we're a bit further apart on than we have been in the recent ratings. Yeah. I think the last one we did, we were pretty, pretty close on, but we'll go through them all. Give a rating for each one. Uh, the rating you'll see on the screen will be the average between mine and Dom's, and then leave yours below in the comments. So, as people will see with our lovely graphics to the right of us on the screen, let's start with Ainsy Pairs. Dom, I'll kick you off. What rating are we going? So, yeah, I feel like I'm against the consensus here because I looked on Twitter just after I got off the game today and I saw that he was going for the man of the match and I was a bit confused with that he made a couple of good saves towards the start of the game uh, but I've never known a goalkeeper to be so anti ambidextrous in my life I I, I I said to my dad in the crowd I was like oh he's, he's left footed don't worry about it he's right footed when he took a goal kick and I, I couldn't believe it I, I was so confused and uh I just don't think he's good enough for this Botman team I think that obviously he made a good, good couple of saves towards the start of the, the game like like I just said um, I don't think there's much more that he can do but he's on the ball he's terrible isn't he I think he needs to go out on loan and I'm probably going to be against you here I'm going to say he's a, it was a, a 6 for him well yeah we are a bit apart I actually went for an 8 with Pears I know he's kicking with poor I just think if he had an well, I'm not convinced he'd have saved him in. Without them saves, I think he'd have turned into an absolute bloodbath in terms of goals. I think Rovers got a battered at points and pace kept us. And even early on, they went through. So I went for an eight. So that works out as a seven average. On pace, let us not be low. Who said he won? Mine are Doms. I've seen, <laughs> like you say, I saw Twitter full of praise for Pears. But I know for a fact, if I go on and look into it, there'll be some comments on our Facebook so, uh, Facebook there's been a few already Lewis Travis right back now I'll start I actually went for a six now I saw we come into a bit of a prison I was so I'm actually shocked I think he's passing with Porter from right back I just think his defensive work were better than maybe we've seen it right back I won't put it up there with his best performance I think uh, Hull away was his best performance at right back I don't think it were that level and I'd give him a seven that day so I've gone for a six with Travis yourself yeah, I don't think we can compare him to his centre midfield roles, can we? We have to compare him to his right back roles and the people who are playing that in that right back position. I think that Travis was good, at, like you say, it was it was a couple of times where he was a bit poor on the ball, where he let himself down, and we know that is his weakness point, isn't it? Is is on the ball, he's better off it essentially, and uh, I think right back might be a better position to him than at, at, in a two of a centre mid rather than a three of centre mid, but. Um, yeah, I agree with you. I, I completely agree with you. With a, a, a what do you say, a six? Is that I said a six? Yeah, it's it, yeah, yeah. I, w I would, I would agree with that as well. It, was, it wasn't, it didn't do anything wrong, didn't do anything necessarily right, but yeah, relatively solid against the Premier League side. Yeah, that's it. We kind of the Premier League factor kind of pushes yeah. us up a bit, doesn't it? In terms of some players, Ash Phillips next. Go on, I'll let you start with Ash Phillips. First time I've seen him in quite a while. Yeah, it is. And I think um, 
expectations comes with it, doesn't it? It's a big factor in this, all this. We're playing against a Premier League side. Like we said, we're playing a second string squad against a first team Premier League side. And as a. Let, Dan, is he 18 or 17? 17. Yeah, 17. just turned that well, really. Exactly. And he still isn't looking out of place. And I, it, it's hard not to give him a seven, isn't it? I, I don't think that. Or is it a six? I, I don't. I, it's so so confusing. He, he came off at one. Did he come off? He came off, didn't he? Yeah, he came off. Yeah, yeah he, he came off. But he didn't look out of place, and it's such a strong position that we have right now with him. That he is seventeen years old. Such a strong position. Like I said, years to come, and I'll I'll give him a seven just because of that. Just because of expectations. Just because we're playing against their first string Premier League squad, and he held his own. Yeah, I actually were a bit harsh on him in hindsight. I went for a six, I think. Kept things relatively calm. Yeah. I think I'm glad it's not a game that's going to tore his confidence apart. I worry when young players play in these. I think he's a bit different to a normal young player, though, in terms mm-hmm. of mentality and that, because a lot of 17 year olds are really struggling a game like this in terms of mentally and in terms of playing. I went for a six. I could. Argue with seven, but I'll go for a six. That's a six and a half average. Scott Wharton next. I'll kick us off. I think it's been a tough night for Scott. The first one was probably the most obvious penalty you'll ever see. I think even the ref in the England France game would have given that penalty. The most <laughs> blatant foul I've ever seen. Uh, gets his header back, so he kind of goes 1 1 in terms of good things and bad things. Uh, then you've got the second goal that hits him on the way and can't really criticise him for that the third goal he gets rolled for as it goes behind him I just think it ran out that he struggled and he's kind of, we spoke of her and we kind of feel he struggled for a bit don't mm-hmm. we kind of sense the Burnley the Burnley absence so I actually went for a four with Scott Wharton on this game I just think it's one of them nights that he, he want to forget soon I know he got his goal but just in terms of the defensive side I just think he was completely out of it and if he hadn't have got that goal I'd have probably rated him lower. You know, what do you make of Scott's performance? Yeah, like you say, we spoke of it off air and I think that it all stems from his absence from the Burnley game. We were so confused with him not being in that squad. Um, Maybe his confidence was knocked from it because obviously against Preston he was poor. Like he said, against Norwich when he came on, he was relatively poor, didn't didn't you, Dan? He said he wasn't great. And, and this one also, it, it, the accumulation of games now, it needs a bit. I think I think something needs to change in his his ways playing. The goal he got, I mean, might have like covered the fact that he was was having a poor game. But like he said, that the two Wharton brothers <laughs> were at fault for that first goal, and that first, yeah, that challenge for the first one was probably the most blatant foul I've ever seen in yeah. a football game. <laughs> I'm going to say a four as well. Um, let's hope that he can get back to his best because we know he can do. He's good enough to get back to his best. He's good enough to be the likes of Hayam and Ayala level, isn't he? And we know he can be there, but he's, he's suffering right now and I, I do feel for him. Yeah, and all these players have these months, don't yeah. they, these weeks when things just don't go right. It happens. It's Championship football especially is horrific for yeah. if you're in a bad patch in championship football you kind of just need to get out of it, don't you? You need that game where you're incredible and then not only not only personally but as a team, like look at Rovers after yeah. February, like, like it sums it up, yeah. doesn't it? That's exactly Rovers the championship is Rovers League Rovers League perfectly in terms of how up and down and how inconsistent it can be. Uh, moving on Clinton Mahler. Dov, I'll let you start with this one. I can kind of envision where the comments will be going on Clinton Mahler. Your thoughts? Yeah, I knew I knew straight away when his game summarised by the fact that when Phillips crossed it over to him and he tried tried to almost rugby tackle the ball and just, just bounced off his chest and went out and then Ten minutes later, and I was like, "Watch him do it again." And miss the ball. I, I, he's he's having a tough time. I don't think he's a left back. He's a centre back playing left back. Um, to be nice about his performance, to be honest with you, I, he wasn't on the ball. He was off the pace. Poor. I think that a three is generous. Yeah, I went for a three. I feel harsh giving someone a two. They've got to 
have been sent off for something stupid like Dom Samadon to Gillingham to kind of get anything like two for me. I just well, let's go back to that one, don't you? Yeah, it's do you know what? <laughs> I remember writing the ratings for the website. This is why I did the ratings for the website, and I always that league one season, I don't think I give anyone less than a four, even Rakeem Harper. And then, <laughs> oh well, this really on its season, but Dom Sam, oh, but it still haunts me coming off. God, I'm getting yeah. sense. I won't go on because it looks like it might not even be Gillingham. I think it reports me. Uh, Clinton right. Moore, like, yeah, just went for free, completely out of it. Compared mm. to the last cup game as well at West Ham, where I think I give him man of a match almost for his performance. That kind of felt like the start of Mola's time in the squad, and it's almost like a month later. Look at look at the Burnley game, game poor. Look at the Preston game poor. Yeah. Look at this game poor. It, is, it hasn't like like Warden, It hasn't been a great run of games. Needs a time away, and I, it, it's almost like the fact that it's lucky that he's just on loan at this point. It's, it it's, sorry, it's, it's a sad state of affairs, isn't it? Well, Taylor Eden kind of feels like he'd be the better option at left back at keeping him around the club, but then you send him all back, aren't you? If, I can just yeah. see us keeping Mola for the season. Eden goes out and on. If Eden has a good loan spell out, he gets his chance in the summer and Mola goes back to Stuck Out. Unless we see a big change in form, it can happen. We'll see about that. Jake Garrett, now, before I start, Jake Garrett said during the week that uh, in his interview, actually, today, I think it was, or yesterday when this is released, that he's not going to go around the pitch nailing people in the middle and snapping them. The amount of times he must have clattered someone with good effect actually not like the Coventry one where he got sent off uh, I'll start with it I give him a six I think he started off a bit slow looked like he was struggling to get in the game but he really got to grips with it and the tackles come out the confidence come back I know it must be hard after that Coventry game uh, when he got sent off for mm-hmm. what eventually yeah. wasn't a red card and the Burnley game when he was thrown into the side with Smodic illness and struggled really it must be hard but I think he did well to adapt to it and I don't think he looked too out of place so I've gone for a six with Garrett yourself yeah I think out of the we'll speak about Adam Watson in a second but out of the two of them I think he was the better performer I think that he was better on the ball I think that he was the one trying to get it from the midfield because that is the way we try to play it obviously we don't know we don't like to play that type of football because it does lead us to be pressured over and over again but he, him and Wharton in the field seem to sort of suss it out eventually after the first couple of well after the first 10 minutes or so um, but yeah I think I think a 6 is about right I don't think he did anything necessarily wrong I don't think he did anything right I think it was just a very solid performance from him um, a performance that is good for this season I think good for himself personally because obviously like you said the, the Coventry and the Burnley one it wasn't a good couple of games for him whether it, it was his fault or not, because it was rescinded and it wasn't his fault for getting the team straight away in the deep end. But good for him, um, fair play. And yeah, I think I think a six is about right. Yeah, and then we'll move on to Adam Wharton. You mentioned him. Let's get into him straight away. Dom, you're rating for Adam. Yeah, I think um, he struggled to get a foothold of the game because his game is to be on the ball a bit more calm and collected, like we said, a bit more casual on the ball. And I think that with the high press of Forrest, with the with Lingard and all and Brendan Johnson and all the, all them players around him, I think he did struggle in this game initially. I think that it, it was his fault for the first goal. Obviously, his pass that was really poor going in lean lean to the Scott Wharton tackle. It wasn't ultimately the Wharton <laughs> fault <laughs> between the yeah. two of them. Um, his expectation is higher now because of the Blackpool game, because of a couple of games like Hull as well. So I can't give him any more than a five. Yeah, I went five. I think you've got to take that expectation into account that you mentioned. I just feel that you're right. When he's in a game where he's constantly pressed in the midfield, that that's not going to suit him as much. And he won't get that in the Championship as much. He'll probably only get that against the better side when I don't think he'll play anyway. So I think, you know, five's perfect with his expectation. We'll move on to the front four. We'll start with Ryan Hedges. I give him a five, I think. I know Morley had a bad game. He didn't cover that side too much in that 4 2 3 one. We saw under Morbury that the wingers need to help them almost. You can't really play with a full a full uh, front four. I think Hedges looked a bit leggy, actually, getting into it. 
I think he struggled to get on the ball, create stuff. He drove forward a lot, but with little effect. So I went for a five hedges. What have you gone for? Yeah, I think in, in, ineffective is is what I'd say his game would be today. I don't think he did much on the ball. I don't think he did, whether it was his fault or not, because we're obviously playing a better team. Um, but the player that we're going to say on the other side of the wing did a little bit more on the ball than he did while he was on the ball. Uh, I think that um, we expect more than what he created today. And Leggy probably would be the right way to describe him, like you said. I think that he needs I don't know whether he needs a week off or not I'm not too sure but he wasn't doing much and I think a five is about right for him yeah well, if I, it kind of it's weird because I don't think he feels overran in terms of playing I think he feels mm. uh, he seems what word would you use like he's struggling for game time but he's also tight it's so weird in terms of what he is because he kind of should be fit shouldn't he because he's had that week in my day unless some had happened that we don't know about in terms of injury well, he, on the bench against Norwich and come on. Well, he's had he's had weeks at right wing back, left wing back. He's not had weeks at right wing, has he, or left wing? This is the, no. probably the first time we've seen him in a wing position against the team in the Premier League. So I I, it, I feel sorry for him almost at, at this point. <laughs> he can't yeah, give him a shot and, and you know they're like right, you can play you, you can play at right wing. All right, okay, cool. <laughs> It's just yeah, that's almost a bit unfair. Yeah, it's tough. Sammy Smoddix will go across that uh, three behind the striker. I went for a five with Smoddix. I think this is a game that doesn't suit his playing style because Forrest so quick at knocking that ball around. It didn't give him any chance to do much. He got the press a few times. I just don't feel this game suits him. I feel it would have suited a that more. But with squad rotation and that, you need to kind of Somebody's had to play almost because of uh, because of Monday's game, isn't it? Not Saturday's game. Because of Monday at Sunderland, we won a first team ready. So it would pick more because of getting him game time rather than it suiting him. So I went for a five. What have you gone for, Smaddix? Yeah, I'll go with the five as well. I think this one will be quick. I think that um, the game by, by, it passed by him, didn't it? I don't, I don't think he was in the game at all. I, when he came up, he came off, didn't he? Yeah, come yeah, off. Yeah, uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, come third, you know. yeah exactly. I, ex- that that that, that summarises my <laughs> pitch for him. I think uh, I feel sorry for him in this game because it wasn't real. Like you say, it wasn't the formation for us for him to play in this game. But w- with with such a smaller squad compared to what they have, um, especially if we're going to play their first team, yeah, this game passed by him a lot. So a five. Yeah, we'll move straight on to Mark and Dean. You mentioned he did more. What rating have you given him? Um, it's difficult because he didn't have the ball that much in the game, but when he did have it, he seemed to have that sort of live wire about himself. I think that between him and Dolan, they're very, very similar on the yeah. ball, but I think Mark Andy actually might be a little bit better from what I've seen on the pitch so far this season. Um it's just unlucky from chances or whether Dolan is just a little bit more established than team. I'm going to give him a. I'm, I'm, st- I'm still only going to give him a six though because he didn't actually do much. But when he had the ball, it was sort of. It, it seemed like there was potential there. Yeah, I went for six as well. Exactly that. I think that if something were going to happen for Rovers in open play, it were going to come from Mark and there in the first half. Second half, I think he struggled and that way he was taken yeah. off. I think that first half summed up for me why we should keep him around the club. Mm. I don't think with an option like him, in terms of if you go from, if you say you're to be between Vale and Mark Andy, I like Vale, I've been a big advocate for him playing. But if you want someone to come off the bench and influence a match to get us back into a game, I think Mark Andy would offer more. If you're trying to hold out a game, I think Vale's your perfect man for it, like we saw at Hull. But if you want someone to create something and Dolan's not really working for you, I think Mark Andy is your best option. Like I said, I think he's better on the ball than Dolan actually is. But maybe Dolan having last season and the season before with the squad yeah. helped him where's Mark Andy right and you know, I went for a six, I think I think we should keep him on the club, but he also needs game time. It's that balance that he's That's not it. better than the people yeah. who start for us. 
But is he a better option on the bench? We don't My know. God. I, in, in the crowd today, I heard that Chapman was better than him. I, I just laughed. <laughs> no, Harry Chapman is the one that wound me up oh, for you. on the show, oh, show man, when I was <laughs> We'll move on. Final man, it's starting 11. George Hurst. I went for a six. No, we Hurst. And no, he didn't do too much on the ball. But when he had it, he actually looked a threat. And he reminded me, and this sounds like a compliment, but it is meant to be kind of a compliment. When Diaz first came into the club and he'd just run with a ball and try and do something on it, it felt like that. Like there were nothing going to come of it, but the ball might yeah. bounce off his shin and go through to someone yeah. there. It felt a bit like that running. I've gone for a six. Maybe that's because of previous performances and it were better than that. Or maybe that's just because I actually felt it was six. What have you gone for? I noticed you were yeah. you reacting when I said about Absolutely. the early days. The same way that you described him is Bambi on ice, but he's such a, he's got such a rawness about him, like Ben Brewerton without the Diaz had about yeah. him. You know, um, in the first season and a half that... There was, a, there was a run in the first half when he went from our box to their box and then we got a corner. I was like, that that was Brereton Diaz. Brereton, it's a Ben Brereton in the first couple of seasons with us, but he just needs that sort of, maybe maybe a couple of goals like Ben Brereton had needed. Because let, let's not forget that Ben Brereton didn't, wasn't great for us in the first two seasons, was he? Like, <laughs> it's not it until shocking. Diaz's name became it was yeah, exactly. The the Birmingham game comes to light that how poor it was in the first couple of seasons. With confidence, it's just a shame that he missed that penalty because I think that if he got that penalty against Cardiff away, I know you were there doing the the report from uh, instead of uh, was it Elliot? You were doing the Elliot, Lanks live, yeah. weren't you? If he got that penalty, I think we would be seeing a different. We would be seeing a George Hurst Ramos, won't we? We'll we, <laughs> we'll be seeing a sort of... Colombian heritage somewhere, doesn't he? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, it's something, isn't it? It's just... something there. There's a there's a bright spark in him that we can see that Ben Brewton had. And yeah, I think a six is about right for him as well in this game, by the way. But I think that we can't give up on him. We can't give up on no. him like we have done in players previously because I'm, assu- I'm 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 sure that we will buy that option come the end of the season. You, what do you reckon? See, it was reported to be five million and if it's oh, five million right. not a chance. But oh, you wish it and you're right, something could just click and it works for me. It worked with Diaz uh, lockdown that first half of the season in lockdown Diaz looked like a different player. I know he then got injured and kind of struggled and then actually come alive when he were cold Diaz. It feels like there has to be something, doesn't there, to kick him in, whether it's a goal, whether he just needs one of them goals that hits him on the back and goes in. Something. He's two yards out and he just miskicks it and it still goes in. There's anything that... Just that little bit of kindle, that kindling that yeah. sparks something. That's something that's just what it needs. And I think when it clicks for him, it happened at Portsmouth. Portsmouth, he were awful in the first half of the season. I think he then got them fitting goals in the second half and yeah. we've just got to hope it works for him and for me I'd wait until the summer see what happens with him I think 5 million is going to be too much unless he scores 10 and then maybe we might start looking at him but we'll see what happens we'll move on to the subs uh, we'll just go quick ratings for these I'll, in fact I can reveal all my ratings we've got Teo Eden who come on at half time for Mola I went for a 6 for him I think he dealt better with Brennan Johnson. Still got torn apart of Brennan Johnson. But actually looked like he could defend against him. I've gone for a six. Teo Eden, you rating? Yeah, I agree. I think that um, even just on the ball retention, of the, <laughs> just, just keeping the ball, uh, that left-back role was his in this game. Brennan Johnson's a quality player and nobody's going to do well against him, but just on the ball, just keep it. <laughs> and yeah, that's that alone gives him a six. <laughs> Dom Hyam, John Buckley, Terry Stolen all coming on with 70 minutes. I've gone for a six for all players, our average rating. Uh, did what they could to influence the game. Couldn't really do too much. I got on the ball a bit, but overall I've just gone sixes for all three. Yourself, Dom Hyam? Yeah, sixes at around as well. I, d- I don't yeah. think the game... Uh, the game. I think the we conceded that third goal just after we put them on. I think that... <laughs> 
the game was done after that, weren't it? Essentially, and I think that after that was a just a dead game. I think that yeah, I think six six for all rounds for them as well. And that's it. That's a ratings. Twenty five minutes of ratings. Thank you, to everyone who's watched throughout. I know it's hard to sometimes watch with a loss, but I think this is kind of a different loss. One that we'll forget about come Sunderland. But thanks everyone for watching. Hit like, hit subscribe, do all that stuff. Check out a, re a review of the game. Uh, in my head, we've got three videos coming before Christmas. Uh, we spoke to, or maybe before, it depends. We've got James Brown, loan reporter, spoke to a Stockport fan who told her all about his time there. Dan Butterworth, loan report, just for Dom. And then we've got the Sunderland preview, predicted it time. We'll try and get all that out before Christmas. Hit like, hit subscribe. Merry Christmas to everyone watching. Thank you for all the support this year. And, you know, I'll say it a million times before, given the amount of games, but really appreciate everyone's backing on the channel. Plenty to come from us next year. Hopefully plenty to come from Rovers as well. It'd be great if we could cover a Rovers promotion season or even a playoff season. We'll see what happens. But until then, who knows? We might have an FA Cup run, but thank you for watching. Merry Christmas, guys.